and I got an exciting video for you today. That's right, we're opening our brand new compact table saw. Now wait a minute, wait a minute, don't go anywhere. This is not gonna be just some show and tell, ooh, ah video. Well, maybe a little bit, but instead, we're gonna measure this thing and see just how good of a purchase I have. I'm gonna see how flat this, the table is. I'm gonna see how true and square the blade runs. I'm gonna see how sturdy and square the fence is. And if you hang around to the end, we're gonna cut some wood with this thing and see how it performs. And last, I got a little spoiler alert at the end. So let's open this puppy up and see what we got. So this is the Hercules 10 inch compact table saw. A little bit later in the video here, I'll reveal where I got it from. If you know where I got it from, hold on. I know, just hang with me. I think you'll be surprised. I know I was. Comes packed in styrofoam with instructions. Yeah, we don't need those. You get a 15 amp motor and it all weighs in at about 52 pounds. Now, before we get started, I think it's real important. Stop, take a couple steps back. Let me explain to you the why and the how I came to the final decision on making this my first table saw. So, I knew I had some upcoming projects that were going to need a table saw. So being a newbie to table saws, like you might be, I knew I had to do a little research. That's right. I started looking on Amazon. So like many of you, I opened up my computer, got to looking on Amazon. Since I didn't really know what I was looking for, I just typed in table saw. Up came several different varieties from the really cheap to the real expensive. So naturally, I honed in on cabinet saw, which is the expensive one. Then I started thinking, you know, I'm new to table saws, I've never owned one, let alone used one, like many of you watching. Why am I looking at the Lamborghini of the table saw? So that's when I just started to look at compact table saws. So if you know me or watched any of my videos, you know I'm a DeWalt man. I mean, I've got a cordless 18 volt impact driver, I got an 18 volt drill. I've got a corded skill saw. I've got another corded drill. I've got a drywall saw. I've got a corded hammer drill. I've got a cordless multi-tool. I even have a couple clamps. I've got the orbital sander. I've got extra batteries. I've got an angle grinder. And last but not least, I've got a double compound miter saw. And I'll leave a link below to all these tools just so you know there will be affiliate links. So for me, the decision was easy, DeWalt. Now just hang with me. I'm just about to tell you where this comes from. And if you know where it's come from, you're still watching, just hang on. You're still gonna wanna see the end. So I decided to search DeWalt table saws. And I decided not to go with the cordless because I didn't wanna invest in the 60 volt battery system that they run on. And it's only eight and a quarter inch and I wanted a 10 inch blade. So I decided to go all in and get the table saw and the cart. Man, I was drooling. It had a 32 and a half inch rip capacity and all these other neat features. And then I saw the price. So I started thinking, I'm going to spend almost 700 bucks and might as well put that money towards an expensive cabinet saw. But as you know, I'd already decided on a compact saw. That's when it hit me. I'll look on YouTube. So I typed in DeWalt table saw versus because I knew I wanted something comparable to the DeWalt. So as I was scrolling through, I come across this video called the Hercules Table Saw versus the DeWalt by the Den of Tools. And I'll leave a link down below for the video. Never heard of a Hercules, so I decided to start watching. And when he said where you can get this Hercules Table Saw from, are you ready for it? No, Harbor no, Freight, no, no, stay with no. me. I know, it's painful. That's right, Harbor Freight. Well, I just about died and almost turned off the video, but I didn't. I mean, for me, Harbor Freight, they have tools, they're just not for me. So I painfully continued to watch, and he made some really good points about the saw, and then towards the end of the video, he started showing how it worked with different types of wood. So even though it come from Harbor Freight, I was sold on it. So there you have it. The reason behind this Harbor Freight Hercules table saw. So if you've hung with me this long and hung through the announcement of Harbor Freight, what do you say we get started and analyze this baby and just see how good it is? Oh, just in case you're wondering how much I paid for it. 250 bucks. Well, it was actually 300, but I had a $50 coupon from Harbor Freight that took it down to 250. And get this, 
I had a hundred dollar gift card from Harbor Freight. So it only cost me $150 out of my pocket. That's Holy right, moly. $150 out of my pocket. Now granted, you'll pay more than that because you didn't have the gift card, but where could you go wrong? $150 for entry, beginner level, table saw. So if you happen to have one of these, comment down below how you like it, or if you have one of the other brands of compact table saw, leave a comment on how you like it. Let's get to showcasing this table saw. So just a quick rundown on the saw, and then we'll get to measuring everything out here. So you got your two and a half inch dust port, your steel roll cage, you got your rip fence, you got your blades or your storage here for your push stick, the uh, blade guard and the kickback prowls you can store down here. Easy lever for moving the rip fence. Lever down here releases, slides out. You got your 24 inches. You got your miter gauge it goes 60 degrees both directions fits in the T slots got your cord storage here these uh, this blade guard a little pull of the lever and it comes off real easy same with these kickback prowls what these are for so when you run your lumber under and it tries to kick back these little teeth will grab into that wood and hold it so it doesn't kick back into you again that comes off real easily you got your riving knife this one happens to be adjustable I can take it all the way down to I don't have it at all or all the way up why is a riving knife important? Because I really wanted one of these. It's because when you're putting your lumber through here and you're cutting on the backside, it may tend to want to come back together. And if so, it's going to bind on the blade and cause it to kick back. Whereas this riving knife keeps it separated because it's long past the blade, so it doesn't do that. Oh, and a side note, this is a nice aluminum tabletop. Magnets don't stick to it. I mention that because, well, I got one of these nice mag switch magnetic feather boards. I thought, wow, this is going to be cool. It don't work. So I got another one that fits in the T-slots, and I'll save that for when I get my big one later on. Uh, the thing, it's got a nice outside here away from the throat plate instead of in the throat plate, a locking mechanism. I'm not too worried about this because I'm going to make a zero clearance one uh, here in the future. So that's nice. That fits in there. And on the front side, you got the nice safety switch um, that uh, actually has a little pop down thing so you don't accidentally turn it on. It's got a nice little uh, big lever to it for you can bump it to shut it off. Here's your uh, turning device to lower and raise the blade. Here's your locking mechanism to make the miters. There you have it. So first thing, let's see how flat the table is. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure with this uh, brand new Woodpecker handy dandy uh, straight edge. Uh, it's precision to be very, very flat. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it on here because it'll stand on its own. And I'm going to flash a light under the edge. And if you see it on the, this side, then you know it doesn't touch. And we're going to measure from here and from here and in the front. And just kind of a side note, if you're getting a big table saw, a cabinet table saw, or even a contractor, if, they can, if you can get it that way, get a cast iron uh, tabletop. Because one, they're going to be the flattest because they're ground flat, and two, it's heavy, and it takes out some of the vibration of the motor. So let's get to measuring and see how flat we are. All right, so I got my straight edge set up here on the front, and then we'll do the middle and the back, and then I've got a flashlight that's strobing that'll shine underneath the edge here and you'll see light underneath where it's not touching and we'll see how much light we see. Now I'm not going to bother trying to measure you know is it three thousandths, four thousandths, I'm just going to kind of well, eyeball say okay this is uh, the reference range and is it the same in the middle, is it the same in the back. So start over here at this side. You can see it's coming under here but it dies off there and when I look, it's touching. It's just about touching there. It's not touching along here. Probably the most light comes out there. And it touches all the way across here. All right, now let's set up for the middle and see how it compares. Again, we'll start on the same side. It 
such as here. Almost looks like there's more light coming through here, which would mean the gap's bigger. I'm not gonna worry about the throat plate. I'd say the gap in the middle is bigger. Over to this edge, quite a bit bigger there. It touches just at the edge there. All right, let's go to the back. Now, the back, I'm gonna put it just a little further because I don't want this throat plate to be interfering. So, start over here on this edge. Touches a little right there. Next to touch there. Seems to be touching there. A little light through there. Not near as much as it was in the middle, but it kind of the big gap there going across the side. Touches right there. Touches along the outfeed fence. All right, so as you can see, up here at the front and probably in the back, it's the best, uh, except for this area here. As a, overall, the front is the flattest, the middle is not, and then this is second, only because it had a little bigger gap in this area than this one did. I was a little surprised that through the middle it had quite a bit of a gap, um, but it may be due to this um, throat plate. So, with that said, um, I mean, I give it a B minus, C plus, somewhere in there for flatness. I mean, for 250 bucks, what do you expect? Remember, this is right out of the box. I've done nothing to correct or fix in anticipation of anything. So let's move on to the next part. So now let's look at the fence. Fence is easy to put on, slides over, latches down. Well, let me latch this. Now one thing I wanted was a fence that was sturdy and, and it didn't move out here. I went to Home Depot and Lowe's and looked at some of their display models and this thing, this thing had wiggled like this when it was locked down and I knew I didn't want it. So, I mean that clamp's really tight. So I like that. It's got an easy slide, nice glide. Now let's see how accurate the measuring strip is on here for the blade. Okay. And in case you're wondering, it takes about 28, 29 turns to bring the blade all the way up. So I'm going to bring the blade all the way up, and I'm going to set this, and then we're going to measure and see how accurate it is. Let's go seven inches. So you see I got that set. What you got to remember is this blade, the teeth go this way and that way. So I'm going to use this tooth. It cuts that way. So you can see to this tooth, which cuts that direction, we're maybe a 30 second off, if that. That's set at seven. We're maybe 64th to a 30 second off. I don't, you know what? I give that an A plus. But you know as well as I do, you're all gonna do this. You're gonna sit here, oh, I want six and a half. Oh, there it is. You're gonna measure. So the fact that this is off by maybe a 64th, I mean, come on. Here, I'll try another one. I'll do five inches. I won't do a close-up. You'll just have to trust me and believe me. That one's dead on. By, by as close as I can look, dead on. If it's off, it's by 128th. So, A plus on the fence. You say, let's see how it is out at 24 inches. Okay, we will. Let's do... 22 inches. This is at 10. Again, I'm taking the tooth that's cut in that direction because that's where the shortest port of the whatever you're cutting is going to be. We're off by a 16th. Now let's see. Let's see what it is on this side of the blade. Here's a tooth that's cutting that direction. Pretty much the same, a 16th. So by eyeballing, these look to be running square, but we got something we can measure. So you know what? off a of 16th, I still give it an A plus because there's a little screw right here that you can loosen and adjust that to make it perfect. But you all know you're gonna do one of these numbers where you're gonna sit here and you're gonna put your tape up there and you're gonna tap it over and you're gonna go, oh, there's 22, lock it down, you're gonna remeasure, go, yep, and then cut it. So A plus 
on the fence, on the sturdiness of the fence and the measurement, A+. Plus. So now let's see how true the blade runs. So next we're going to use this digital alignment gauge. Comes in this box, I got it from eye gauging. Again, I'll leave a link down below. It's got set screws right here that adjust the tension on this spring as to how tight it is in here. So when you put it in, it doesn't have any slop. And then you got an Allen wrench that you use to loosen this up so that you can move it back and forth to where you want. So we'll put this in here. I'll tighten this up so you can just see how tight this is in this T-slot. It takes a lot of force to get that to move, more than what this is gonna do. So how this works is, is we loosen this up. We're gonna take a pen, some sort of marker, and mark the tooth that we're gonna use. Because we're gonna use the same tooth on each side. Then we're gonna set this to where it touches. We'll tighten this down. So I'll get you a close up. I have this to where it just barely is kicked over, but I can move this really hard, but when I push this lever, this doesn't move. Okay, you can see we've marked this. Move this down. There's our tooth. And you see I barely got it on this side. So we'll move that pin. We'll turn it on. Now if it wasn't at zero, we could zero it. So that's zero. So next what I'll do is I'll turn this over and we'll move this down. Now we want to make sure when we set it up on this side, they do exactly or as close to exactly as the same. So I'm going to cover this so you can't see until I want to reveal that we got this just like the other side. Are you ready? That's three decimals over. That's point zero zero four and a half ten thousandths out. Let's just say I'm fudging this and I'll put it in just a little bit further on the tooth. Six and a half ten thousandths. See what metric is. We're out by one one hundred and twenty eighth of an inch. Point one seven millimeters. Come on. Triple A plus. Go to Stumpy Nub's Woodworking Journal. He does a whole series on table saws and how to get the table flat, how to get the blade to run true and all of that. And he tells you right in there, if you can get your blade within 10 thousandths, I am point, because that's hundreds, tenths, 10 thousandths, triple, quadruple, A plus. This blade is dead on square. So now we'll move it to the other side over here and we'll check the fence. All right, so I just randomly set this and put that on there and zeroed it out. Now what I'm going to do is just run this down there and follow it and see if it changes. I can't go any further than that or it'll come out of the T-track and be off. So you see I'm 0.016 or a 64th of an inch out. Come on, this is out of the box. And like the fence, yeah, you can play with it a little bit and get it to be one way or another. So next, we're gonna measure how square these miter slots are to the edge of the table. So that when you're running wood through here, you know that you're running square. Now, we already know they're pretty darn square because of we did the measurement with the t slot to the blade. But, you know, just to be really picky. So I'm using this putty knife. I put red line on there, red mark on there, so when I slide this up, you know, if squares like this, we see a whole bunch of red. We know it's not right. Or if we see something like that. So we see it where there's nothing. It's what we're looking for. So I'm holding it flat. And there you have it. All you see is just the very, very edge of that red line. Let's try the other way. You have to take my word for it. It's dead ass the same. Down here, let's look down here. Again, I hold this up here now. When I'm holding it, I'm making sure that I have contact on the blade. You can see the red all the way down. 
and I don't have some somewhere and some not. So good contact. Slide this in. I hold this while I take the blade away. For all intents and purposes, that baby is dead on square. So I checked this side over here, both sides, and same thing. Dead ass square. Quadruple A plus again. So I raise the blade all the way up, and this at zero, locked in. What I'm going to use is an AccuMaster uh, angle finder. Again, I'll have a link, but basically, it's got a magnetic side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on here, turn it on, and zero this out because this may not even be level. Okay, I got it set to zero. I zeroed out, put it on the blade. 89.4, six tenths of a degree out. Looks like 89.6 is as close as I can get. Four tenths of a degree out. I'm going to at least give it that an A. A plus would have been dead on, but four tenths, four tenths of a degree. So let's check out 22 and a half, 30, and 45. Why? Those are your most common cuts. 45 grand for cutting a 90 and a half. 22 and a half is half of a 45. If you ever do any baseboard trims around a, uh, a rounded corner bead, you'll need that measurement. And then 30 is another popular one. So I'm basically going to set it to whatever this says is over here, and then we'll measure it. And again, we'll zero this out. So. 22 and a half first. So you can see I'm not cheating. 22 and a half, eyeballed. Zero. So what's 22 and a half minus 90? 67 and a half. I'm three tenths, three tenths of a degree. I was four tenths at 90. That's eyeball. Now you know darn good well I can adjust that to make it perfect. But just by eyeballing, again, I put that as an A. Take this to 30, zero it out. Dead on. That's eyeball. Now I know we can adjust this and use this and we're gonna make it dead, we can make it dead on that way. But if you didn't have this and you had to set this by yourself, dead on. Let's do 45. Now I'm gonna leave it on there and I'm just gonna move it. And I won't know till I'm done where it is. A tenth. One tenth of a degree. I'm going to have to put this almost an A+. Plus. So there you have it. Next part we're going to cut some wood, but overall I give it a B for flatness. I give it an A for this A plus for the sturdiness of this fence. I give it a quadruple A plus for squareness to the table of these tracks. I give it a triple A plus for the trueness of this blade running and the same for the trueness of this fence. So overall with what I've measured I'm sorry this has to rate a, a minus at the least and I minus because of the table. Out of the box no adjustments. 250 bucks come on. You think a DeWalt's gonna be any better for 700? I don't think so. Let's cut some wood. Okay, so I don't have a, uh, my shop vac isn't a two and a half inch port like this and I don't have an adapter, I'll need to get one. So we're gonna let the sawdust fly. But I've got uh, a two by, or one and a half by one and a half, a two by four. I've got some old siding down here, which I took off uh, the house, which is another project coming up for a video. It's kind of like uh, OSB, we'll run this through and we'll see um, how well it cuts with the stock blade. It's a 40 tooth blade. First though, let's check the noise. I don't really have anything to go by, but it's not any louder than my uh, miter saw. So let's set this up. I've already determined this is pretty accurate. So a two by four is three and a half. Let's cut a quarter inch off, roughly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this through and then we're gonna measure it and see how close we are. Are we end to end? Okay? Safety glasses. Now I'm going to run the other side through so I have two square sides instead of a rounded corner.
No burn marks. Some saw marks, but it didn't burn. Let me get my calipers and we'll measure. Three and seven, 128. Three and three thirty seconds. So what's the difference? That's a difference of five one hundred and twenty eight. Five one hundred one twenty eight. That's the difference. For a compact table saw, I think that's pretty good. And you gotta realize I'm putting this two before in and I'm not the best. I'm doing a little of this. So as I get better with this, I'm sure I'm gonna get it even closer. So I've done that for a two hundred and fifty dollar compact table saw for a new DIYer or woodworker. I really don't think you got any better with any of the others for our twice the price. So let's check some angles and see how they do. And let's, uh, let's just set up our standard 22 and a half, 30 and 45. Now we're going to use our digital miter gauge here. This needs to be at 67 and a half. Dead on, 67 and a half. 22 and a half. I'm gonna take these prawls off because it catches on it too much. But as you see, no burn. Yeah, I know this is just some SPF, spruce pine fir two before, but still, I don't have any hardwood, but I mean, come on. I fed it through pretty good. I got hung up when it hit those prawls and it was a lot harder to push, but I was feeding this pretty, pretty fast and I think it did well. Wood's a little wet. Out those prawls, it cut through pretty quick. I mean, it really did. I really like this uh, off switch. This little big switch. You can just kick it or just bump against it and it's off. I really like that. That's a good feature. Let's do some OSB. So I got this piece of siding here. It's like an OSB. We'll just do some rip cuts. I mean, it cut through it pretty clean. I mean, yeah, there's some little tear out down here, but it's OSB. That's a factory blade, 40 tooth, cheap old, come with it saw blade. Even on these two befores, I got no ragged edges. They cut sharp and smooth, triple A plus. Well, if you made it this long in the video, I truly want to thank you. Uh, the spoiler alert I talked to you about is the saw is being discontinued. Uh, you can still get one, the clearance, the other spoiler is, is now they're $349, but they have a $30 off, so, you know, $320. Um, the new ones are coming out with the, the side uh, fence comes with rack and pinion. Will it make it any better? I don't know. If you happen to get one, put it in the comments, let me know. Let us all know. If you happen to get this one, put it in the comments how you like it. Also, the new one coming in at $350 also. So, I keep saying I got it for $250. I got a hell of a deal. And I'm going to tell you, overall cut, it's an A. Okay, A minus because of the table, but it cuts, I mean, for $200, $350 even. A DeWalt's going to cost you 600 bucks. I don't think it's going to do any better. If you want better, you're going to have to jump up into a $1,500 saw. So as a beginner, DIYer, woodworker, I think this is a great buy. Also, if you've noticed, I've had three different shirts on. They all have the DIY theme. Uh, these are designs of mine. I have others at my store. I'll leave a link down below for it if you want to go check it out and purchase one. So if you like this video and like how I review the tools, I'll leave a link up here uh, to some other uh, tool reviews I did. They were DeWalt, naturally. One other thing to think about if uh, you get this uh, saw, look at it this way. Let's say in a year or two, I'm upgrade to a big expensive cabinet saw. I can probably sell this for a couple hundred bucks. Now, if you say you got yours for 350, I mean, you used it for a year or two for 150 bucks? Come on, let's be real. This was a good buy, you have to admit it. Comment below if you agree. So I wanna thank you for watching. Until the next video, happy DIYing.